for sure. I mean, cattle that are going to be sold here in the near future, they'll have been, they'd have been facing uh, mud conditions for how long? The last two months. And I mean, we've been we've had pretty tough pen conditions for the last two years. I mean, some feedlots had a hard time uh, getting out on their field to get the manure hauled away uh, late last fall. So they had more uh, mud conditions later into the year last year. And yeah, that's just kind of compounded. And so, yeah, it's that, that effect is pretty immediate. As soon as that mud shows up, it's costing performance. Following closeouts on cattle that have been sold, uh, you know, in March, April of this year, closeout numbers are definitely down. In other words, performance is a little bit poorer. Uh, I think most of that is contributed to an increased maintenance cost when cattle have to slug through a lot of manure to get to the feed bunk or get to the bed pad. That just costs a lot of energy and that's energy that is going towards maintenance rather than uh, uh, production. And so that can affect both average daily gain and feed efficiency. And so as a result our cost of gains increase. Now that uh, increased uh, cost of gain on cattle in bad pen conditions is attributed to an increased maintenance cost on those cattle. So the cattle are consuming the feed, but most of that energy is going towards maintenance uh, rather than production or gain. Uh, <clears throat> I've read reports where poor pen conditions have resulted in an increased uh, maintenance cost of up to 30%. Uh, I know I've done some math and I know a 20% increase in maintenance costs results in about a 15% uh, reduction in rate of gain and 15% uh, reduction in feed conversion and uh, that added 12 to 15 cents on our cost of gain. So if the pen conditions are poor for only a month, you know, that might amount to uh, only three or four dollars an animal but if it's those conditions result over the whole feeding period yeah that can be up uh, up to 70 bucks an animal yeah, anytime uh, we reduce performance uh, like average daily gain we often time times uh, lose out on how much fat the animal is depositing on their carcass so that can affect marbling uh, and yield grade. So, you know, that applies not only on performance, but if we end up with more foot rots in the pen, uh, those foot rots will definitely uh, negatively affect carcass quality also. Uh, we have seen an increase in liver abscesses over this past year, and I think some of the wet conditions, the mud, uh, difficulties in cattle getting to the bunk on a regular basis. I think that's contributed to, to some liver abscess con uh, concerns. Just making sure we have proper uh, liver abscess prevention in the diet. Yeah, Thailand is probably uh, the most effective on liver, liver abscess control, but having any type of liver abscess control in the diet it, it would be very worthwhile through these muddy conditions. Uh, I, I'm personally not a big proponent of feeding increased forage levels, although that also would help with the liver abscess controls. It also costs on performance when you do that. So There's definitely a cost. I mean, obviously there's a cost when we have cowboys out pulling cattle, uh, taking the cattle up to the chute, medications cost money, and performance uh, is affected. The bedding is an obvious one. Obviously a lot more bedding put out uh, to try to reduce the tag on the cattle. And uh, a lot more manure removal from the pen when we clean our pens. And I know last year a number of feedlots actually had to repair their pens because they basically lost the floor from their pens. Uh, cattle punched a hole in them in the soft conditions. And so, yeah, there'd be producers around here that could tell you a lot better than me how much money that cost them. But I, I know it was tens of thousands of dollars.